Darn live, and we're on. What's up, everybody? This is DTM. We're back. I told you we're going to be live today. We got an awesome, awesome, talented, and creative guest. My name is DTM. Find me anywhere on the internet, Delta Tango Mike. And welcome to Coffee with DTM. Let's start our show. Yep, there it goes. I had to tap it twice just because. I don't know why. I just did it. Let me sip my coffee and get started with the show. I want to thank everybody for being here. And I want to uh, make sure that you give us uh, your in feedback, leave a comment, let us know what you're doing, let us know what you're working on, what is going on in the art life with you today, and uh, tag us in your projects. I'm interested in making sure that I see all the creative projects that are going around. I feel inspired. I feel like I'm part of the community. The more I see the post that you are making when it comes to art and creativity. Without further ado, let me introduce our awesome guest. Hi, I'm Josephine from Josephine Animates. Awesome, Josephine. So tell us where you're from. I'm originally from San Antonio, Texas, uh, but I had the wonderful uh, chance to grow up in Europe, and then I ended up here in Atlanta. Nice, nice, nice. And um, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for sitting down and sharing a little bit about you. You're um, welcome. Tell us a little bit about what Josephine Animates means. What is that? Uh, to me, it means a, a bunch of different things. Animation has always been my passion. I really, really love the way that it combines everything that I enjoy, from music to acting to performance to, uh, to art and, and colors. There's just something about how it is so complex that makes my heart sing. Very animated, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And, I like uh, that. And I am a person who loves uh, like a lot of different things as well. Uh, as you can see, I love bright colors and I love different kind of fashion styles and, and things. And I love like a lot of vivid movement, uh, performance, dancing, acting. Hmm. Uh, I've I've dabbled in pretty much every craft I can get my hands in. And nice. It just all all formulated into animation. All and right. Because it, it is that it's it's part of me that I exude in the world that I I decided that that's what my name was going to okay. be my brand. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Uh, for those of us, for those of you who are just joining us in, this is Copy Break with DTM. We have Josephine Animates with us today, and uh, we're going to spend a good 30 minutes with her, so please stick around and give us some feedback at any time. And uh, so let me ask you a couple questions. Uh, number one, when is, um, how, um, let me see. I want to I I ask this the right way. Tell us about your earliest memory as a at, with creativity was it drawing was it painting it what was, was it it was actually painting so my mom is big into all sorts of different kinds of crafts and whatnot and uh she got into ceramics and um so my favorite memory is we had gone to the ceramic shop and we had found a pink uh well not pink uh, we had found this dinosaur and um, I love dinosaurs because Power Rangers was my favorite thing <laughs> as a kid. So it was like Megazords and, and all of all of that, that fun things. So we got this dinosaur and I wanted to paint the whole thing pink. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm. my mom was like, are you sure you want to do pink? Are you sure you don't want to put eyes on it? Or like she gave me all of these other things. And I was like, no, pink. Pink mm -hmm. is, is going to be my, my thing. And I loved this dinosaur so much that I took it to show and tell at school <laughs> and it was uh, uh i ended up breaking but i still i still <laughs> loved it anyway oh. uh-huh yeah that was nice and, uh, and how did you feel when you were painting did you feel like you were creating something it, you were it was, something it was just fun and mm -hmm. uh my mom uh, we grew up in well at this point we were in north carolina 
Um, that was where my dad was stationed because my dad was a uh, military mm -hmm. and there wasn't a whole lot to do there. So my mom really, really went out of her way to find like different crafts and things to entertain five year old little me and mm -hmm. like to keep to keep uh, herself entertained as well. Yeah. So uh, I learned like, you know, play how to make your homemade Play-Doh. Um, we did all sorts of little glue projects and, and everything. My mom's a very creative, so I'd say like some of the spark came from her. Yeah. And then I made it all my own. Nice. And uh, in school, I'm sure you uh, took art classes in school. Did you try out for stuff? Uh, I didn't really do art classes specifically until I got to high school. Uh, before then, chorus was actually my uh, my love. I loved singing, loved uh, the, the performing aspect of everything. Uh, but it was like, it was during a transition period in mm -hmm. my phase. Uh, I mean, my youth. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, during, during that time, I was really, really struggling with reading. And it was a, a big challenge for me because I'm a dyslexic with a processing deficit. So the standard teaching methods for dyslexia and, and getting people up to reading standard just were not working with me. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were trying to find all sorts of avenues to keep my interest and love of reading. So we got into audiobooks and specifically comic books. And that is where, like, my uh, reading began to pick up because I could start to make the correlation between mm, the images that I was seeing mm -hmm. and the um, and the words that were on the page, uh, and I started to understand how to spell better, how to how to get better at, at those kind of things, as well as other things that we we did like private tutoring mm -hmm. and and other stuff. Uh, but comics became a theme where, com that were that were in there as part of that process. Yeah, so co comics uh -huh. comics became a big part of my life. I got into mm -hmm. anime and, and manga, and uh, really uh, got inspired by that Japanese culture and and different other things like that. And uh, from there, and f just from the the spark of loving, like how. Uh, things were drawn and mm -hmm. how things sparked the imagination. I became fascinated with animation and specifically anime at the time. Uh, but I still loved going and seeing anything Disney, DreamWorks, mm -hmm. uh, or uh, some of the smaller film studios like Blue Sky and, uh, oh gosh, who, who else was out at the Ardman, Ardman, yeah, stop motion. Mm -hmm. uh, loved all of that. That that's my family loved all of that. And now, uh, growing up, did you think that you wanted to be an artist and that was a career for you? Uh, what was on your mind growing up, I, looking at adulthood? Uh, <laughs> if we were to uh, ask my mom this question, she would uh, definitely say that I uh, wanted to be all the things because. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, because I wanted to be a, a gypsy ballerina fairy princess warrior. Mm -hmm. uh, I And my mom was like, okay, you do that. <laughs> so uh, we got me into dance classes, and I did performance for a little while. We got me into martial art classes. I did that for a little while. Um, growing up overseas, due to some of the conflicts that were happening, we on base got some training, uh, some mm -hmm. survival training, and that, that stuck with me. I was in Girl mm -hmm. Scouts for a long time, which allowed me to explore all of that. And so uh, to answer <laughs> that question, uh, I, I did want to be an artist, but I also wanted to be a marine biologist. Okay. Or biologist specific, uh, more generally, but marine biology mm -hmm. was a personal favorite, and mm -hmm. it, it's still something I am very passionate about. It's just, uh, well, by the time I was thirteen, I knew I wanted to be an animator. Mm -hmm. That was it. Yeah, that was like you. that was everything. Uh huh. And so, what steps did you take uh, in school or in high school to to find a way into animation? Uh, were there were there any opportunities? Uh, yeah, there were there were a couple that I am I'm very fortunate that I was able to be a part of. Um, so starting out with for a little while I was homeschooled and my mom 
uh, was really good about trying to find uh, me stuff to do. At the time we were living in Augusta, so there wasn't like a whole heck of a lot to uh, put me in that didn't involve uh, a church, because mm-hmm. uh, there there was no church that we were particularly called to being a part of. By then, uh, by then you had moved back to the states, yeah, and uh, and and you were living in Augusta. Yeah, we were living uh-huh. in Augusta okay. before uh, I fully ended up here in Atlanta. Mm-hmm. We were in Augusta for about two years. Okay. Uh, and that uh, we got uh, me into a class with Xavier Jones, who is a mm. big art name down there. Uh, I know him. You do? Yeah, yeah he's he's yeah, I he's visited been nice. him, I visited with him, with him uh, last year. Oh, in the nice. summertime. Stopped by Augusta on the way to the beach. Yeah, he uh-huh. he was uh he was my first mentor. I uh-huh. still call him Professor X cuz that <laughs> <laughs> How can you not with a name like Xavier? Yeah, that that's just, right. Uh-huh. That just sounds uh-huh. awesome. Uh-huh. Uh yeah, he he was a big encouragement. I attended some of his classes. Okay. And um was able to stay friends with him after I moved too. And he really instilled the whole business and art thing in me. So uh, with building up my skills and and drawing, I didn't really get into uh, art classes until about um, the sophomore year, I think. Uh, No, I, no, sorry. I was in art classes all through uh, high school. but yeah, that he really instilled the I being able to be a thriving artist mm-hmm, rather than mm-hmm. a um, what is it, a starving artist. And yeah. <laughs> a lot of stuff. So I was like, okay. Uh, in between that and then uh, that that was more so comic work that he focused in on, but it mm-hmm. gave me a great idea of storyboarding and pacing mm. and uh, just overall basic character design. And he never. He never said no to anime, like a lot of right. art teachers I yeah. knew on yeah. that, mm-hmm. that got really, um, really defensive. He actually, he was really good about focusing in on the core uh, value of the artwork of like, okay, well, here are the fundamentals that you need. If you're right. going to do anime, this is what you, what you need to do. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do anime, go ahead and learn realism because it'll just make everything else improve. Right. right. And I think that's the part that's missing. I hear that complaint a lot. And, and fortunately, uh, I did not go to art school, but I, I, do, I do hear a lot of artists complaining that their teachers discourage anime and, uh, and manga art and so on. And I think that there's room for everything if we frame the knowledge in a way of stepping stones. Yeah. And uh, from having uh, been in Japan and uh, studied Japanese culture for a while, there is a lot of fundamentals that is put into uh, anime that we kind of miss over here. There's a, a level of technique and skill that... Uh, we just don't see as an overall culture because we are uh, as an overall culture caught up in ourselves Mm -hmm. just as any other culture is so it's 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 not something that is inherent to us uh but i i think that lack of understanding that yes there is fundamentals put into uh animation as well as any of or anime specifically anime manga uh that is just as important over there that it is over here and that's why uh, it can be misunderstood. Right, right. I got you, I got you. Uh, uh, yeah, and then uh, continuing on the animation, like, did I have opportunities? I actually got to go to SCAD for a little while while I was in high school. Okay. Uh, taking some of their summer seminars and uh, and um, uh, courses, uh, thanks to uh, the support of my grandmother, uh, who was like, okay, if she's going to be passionate about this, let's, let's do that. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, she, uh, I, I got to attend and begin working with, uh, with Flash and a little bit of hand-drawn animation. Mm-hmm. And then because uh, I had that idea of I need fundamentals uh, f- firmly pushed in, into me, uh, I took a lot of figure drawing classes and uh, got into... Um, uh, a color theory really, really nice, early. Yeah. Nice. That's good. Those are some of the fundamentals and the basics that we all need to learn and so on. Okay, cool, cool. I want to take a moment to invite everybody who is watching. 
if you're in Atlanta and uh, you want to come in and have a have a moment to talk about your art and your creativity the way Josephine is, I invite you to let us know that you're interested so that we can bring you in one of these days and do a coffee break with DTM episode, and we'll talk about art and the art life and your process and so on. We invite a live studio audience, and somebody's phone keeps going off, and they need to uh, turn off the sound. Um, uh, we'll figure that out as the time goes on. It's not your phone, right? No, no mine's okay. off. Yeah, I know whose phone it is. And this is the set that we're working in right now. And, uh, and we put this together for us to have fun, enjoy the art, the creativity, and live stream a little bit. This is the Cinemaker Studio set. And we'll talk more about Cinemaker as the day goes on. Check out Cinemaker app. And um, we're using an iPad here to control all the different cameras and different angles and so on. But studio audience, please turn off your ringer. All right, let's get back to it. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so now that you're um, uh, in, in, uh, trying out SCAD and, and getting into the art fundamentals and so on, um, what did you, what projects did you start working on? For yourself, personal, or with, with collaborating with others? Um, so during that, that time, I was really focused in on like being very good in school and, and doing a, a lot of that kind of work. So I, I built up a, a pretty, pretty decent portfolio mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of traditional mediums and getting uh, very strong with oil pastel and watercolor and ink and... Um, color, pencil, shading, shading, and all of that because I was uh, part of the AP Studio Arts program. Uh, I got a four mm. on my portfolio, nice. so that, that was pretty good. Uh, but I knew that I was going to go off to uh, business uh, and, and study business before I, I even got to SCAD. Mm. Okay. Um, well, what, what's, the, uh, what's the idea behind studying business? What is it that you saw? that you uh, wanted to learn out of that? A lot of people kept, uh, oh, well, so early days of the internet, you didn't see like a lot of successful artists. And if you did, that you, it was because you were more so a part of those art spheres already. And it was mm. a little uh, hard to see a lot of that. So a lot of what I would hear is people, uh, the starving artist mentality. And so I was like, okay, well, if, uh, if, there are starving artists, and I know that there's a possibility of there being successful artists because look at Walt Disney. <laughs> right. They uh, made it somehow, yeah, right? Yeah, uh -huh. and, and I, I read a lot, a lot of um, uh, bio biographies and autobiographies uh, from different artists, and uh, so I was like, okay, well, the one big thing that is important in all of this, besides putting yourself in that right position is also being in the right mindset. So if you have a good business mindset, if you know how to read contracts, if you know how to, mm -hmm. um, if, if you know how to price your your stuff, if you know how to do marketing, uh, then you can be successful. Right. Uh, so I was, I was like, okay, let's let's go and uh, let's go to college for that. Mm. And I did. And I actually fell out of love with my art for a little while. Mm -hmm. uh, but I did get extremely good at knitting. <laughs> 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 I, I did get... What do you mean? So, so you went to school to learn the business, and you kind of fell out of favor with art because you weren't working on art so much. You were yeah, focused on the business. It, 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 I, I didn't like anything that I was producing on mm -hmm. my own. Mm -hmm. I... Uh, I uh, essentially got kind of miserable with the with mm -hmm. the business classes, uh, and that and that and that energy did not translate well when it came time for art. Yeah, and I like uh, if I were to show you, you'd be able to see like the quality of my work go from like this really really high clean clean pieces all the way to the oh it looks like she's just starting out, mm -hmm. and then now it's back up to like. Uh, really, really high, clean, polished pieces. I see. And that was about a, a four-year space in my life. Wow. Uh, but I, like I said, I did. I get got extremely good at knitting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I made some of 
I made some really, really complex uh, work sweaters and mm -hmm. uh, design patterns and, and did that professionally for a little while. And okay. it, it looked really good. Nice. Uh, but it wasn't where my passion was. Mm -hmm. it, I ended up um, finishing up my uh, business degree and then switching to uh, studio art just mm. to feel alive again because mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I just I just felt really stuck yeah. and it was it was hard yeah well uh, what is what is studio art what does that mean uh, so studio art is can uh, or it, it's also considered a fine arts degree mm -hmm. uh, or uh, you, where you focus in more so on traditional art mediums. You don't really work with a lot of uh, digital work. I see. So if you were to be going to a two-year college like I, I went to, um, then you would be, uh, then you'd probably end up in a studio arts. Or if you were going to go for digital art, then your college might have something. I know a couple of colleges around here have some digital art programs. Uh, but it, it's not as as common as fine arts is going to be. So, so it really comes down to a lot more traditional uh, materials, traditional um, um, uh, mediums than uh, than than what yeah. that you will see uh, overall on digital yeah. stuff. That, uh -huh. that, that's yeah, what that's you're really cool. Okay. Yeah. So you went in and jumped in, and you know, I think uh, traditional materials give you that extra. Feeling. Yeah, I I am definitely a, a, a big texture person. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, even to the point since knitting had been a, a big part of my life for a long time, I I can tell a fiber uh, what a fiber mm -hmm. content is just by feeling it. Nice, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I I got that. So it was like being able to jump from that back into traditional work because before I was doing a bit of tr digital and a bit of traditional is mm -hmm. kind of a given give and take uh, but uh, then I just went strictly uh, st yeah strictly uh, strictly traditional I still kept up with a lot of like editing and mm -hmm. being able to use and work uh, digital programs and, mm -hmm. and understand their layouts and how uh, how the program works but I didn't use it right um, Okay. So I and then that's where I fell in love with watercolor. It became mm -hmm. it, it became my end all be all medium. And that's what I noticed the most of your work is that amazing control for watercolor, which is kind of um, it's 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 uh it takes time to master. Yes, it it, it does. You got to be willing to make some mistakes. Uh -huh. And yeah. willing, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you a lot be, of mistakes that I made. <laughs> yeah, you got to be willing to have the understanding that yes, you're going to need control, and you need to know what the watercolor is going to do before you put it on paper. Yeah, but you also need to let go and let it do what it's going to do. Yeah, because yeah. it it will never do exactly what you want it to. Mm. And it's always going to turn out a little funky, a little strange. Uh, and But that is the beauty of it. That is how you can build up texture. You can build up glazes. You can make something look very ethereal and light and delicate while also being this very strong, impactful piece. You can use more opaque uh, pieces where, or you can make it more transparent. There's that nice balance. Mm -hmm. And if you throw ink and, or gouache into it, forget about it. It's something amazing. That is awesome. That's a great way to describe watercolors. <laughs> We're going to take a moment Number one, to drink some coffee. You didn't bring your uh, cup of tea, did you? No, I left it on you the left, table. Oh, over man. There. <laughs> so let me sip on a little bit of coffee. Just and, so you uh, know, it was chamomile. It was chamomile, <laughs> yes. It'll still be there for you. We're going to answer a couple of the um, comments that we have on Facebook. Number one, Neil Hamilton says, What's up, dude? What's up, brother? Hi. Arthur Abdon, you know, he lives in um, Augusta. And he knows Xavier Jones. Uh, when I went down there uh, last year, I <laughs> met with both of them. He says, Xavier Jones, that's so cool. He's just commenting on you knowing him also. Carlos Phoenix says, what's up? School of Visual Arts has a great art and digital art programs. Uh, I couldn't tell you where that school is. Um, uh, I'm sure it's a, diff a particular school that you have in mind. And then following, thanks for sharing your story, Josephine. 
I also had a roundabout way of finally pursuing art as a career. So happy to see you did the same. DTM nailed it. Your watercolors are lovely. That's Jules Primus. She is an amazing artist. Oh, she got skills. Like, I'm checking out. I'm Jules, I'm checking out your portfolio <laughs> to step up my work. Like, that's amazing. You should come and be on screen with yes, us. Yes, you need to. You need to. And then Mike John says, I never heard watercolors described so passionately. Oh, thank that's you. That's a real stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for your comments. Uh, we'll try to read the rest of them before uh, we sign off. I'm going to give you a quick shot of the studio that we're in. We got a big uh, iPhone way back there. Uh, checking out the whole scene. We got a bunch of lights. We got the Cinemaker background. We're seeing um, some chairs and a couch. Just a little quick setup just for our live streaming. It's uh, Copy Break with DTM. Cinemaker app is the application that I'm using here on the iPad and on the iPhones. And through the use of those iPhones with Cinemaker, where they're capturing the video. Mm -hmm. There's another uh, iPhone capturing the audio coming out of these microphones into a mixer and then all the way back into Cinemaker, which is why you see this little setup going on right here. Because I'm doing the directing and the interviewing at the same time. It's like having a portable studio. That's all right. All on your phone. That's right. All on the phone. And it all fits in my backpack. So back to our conversation. Uh, the last couple of questions that I have for you. Let's see. We're good with the comments. Is uh, So tell us uh, about where you've been using some of your watercolors. I think I've seen a lot of your watercolor work or even marker work because you have a ton of markers. Yes, like I, I see, do. I see some of your posts like, ooh, what are, mar what are those markers? And I'm a marker fan. I love markers. Um, I love pencils and pens and, and inks, but uh, markers are my thing. Markers are your thing. Yes, I love markers. Um, I think I ha almost have every, every marker out there. You got extra access. I don't know where you find your markers. <laughs> uh, I do a lot of special ordering. A lot of special ordering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more of a walk in and see it. I got to have I, it. I prefer that too. Um, it, uh, I actually, that's actually one of the things I do first. If I can't find it locally, then it's like, all right, tons of reviews. <laughs> and uh, I, yeah. I can read Japanese and a little bit of Korean. Nice, so nice. It's like, uh, it's one of those where it's like, oh, okay. If I can't read the review in English, let me hop over to a Japanese page and see what the Japanese are talking mm, about. Mm, mm. Talented. Uh, <laughs> Super talented. So um, tell me about some of your characters and art that you're working on for journaling. And how did that start off? Where did this journaling come from? Uh, so I have always been into planning. I grew up with the Franklin Covey system. That's something that uh, my mom was really, really heavy into. It was how she helped keep organize, her self-organized mm -hmm. and and everything. And she's like, okay, if you're going to do something, make sure to put it in my paper brain. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> a paper brain. Yes. Yeah, so, and so we, I grew up with that. And then, like, in high school, uh, it just, it just kind of fell off. It never really caught because I felt like it was uh, t a too rigid of a system for me. Mm -hmm. And then about my, s my second year in, in college, it was hard to really keep track of everything that was going on in the classes. It was hard to um, keep up with all of the little projects and things that I was working with and keep up with house duties and keep up with travel schedules or events that I was wanting to go with. Uh, I kept feeling like I was missing something. Uh, so... Uh, essentially, a lot of stuff stimulates from how much uh, me and my mom are friends. Mm -hmm. We uh, that's great. Yeah, we we share a lot of our passions with each other, and we get ex get excited about stuff with each other. So uh, I was introduced to the Hobonichi planning system, and it uh, essentially it's called your your daily life book. It's not specifically a planner, and it is open. It's structured enough that you have these uh, blank pages to work with, but it also allows you to have a freedom to, uh, oh, it's still pretty bright, that's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, it, uh, it also allows you to have this freedom to structure each page uh, for yourself of how you, you need it. So I began building up uh, to-do lists, keeping track of like 
school projects or events that I wanted to come to. Like uh, Art is King actually was in one of my planners mm -hmm. uh, where I had it marked down on all the days that uh, I wanted to show up or was able to show up if I didn't have a class or, or anything. Yeah. Let me, let me pull up a couple images that I got. These are uh, some of the um, figures. Some of the planner stickers. And, and, and as these are stickers that go on planners, right? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, that one's actually inspired by uh, Yuri on Ice. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an anime that is uh, fairly popular. Nice. And then, let's see, uh, these are some of the more stickers. Yeah, those, those are more of my original designs, uh, getting more into to the watercolor work. Uh, and that's actually a weekly setup. Okay. And then uh, more, and what I like about the work that you make is that um, it's not just uh, keeping track of your work and, and your calendar, but it, uh, it makes it fun to look at mm -hmm. and interact with your own journal or your own calendar. Uh, so Kawhi journaling originates from uh, Japan, okay. uh, and that's just part of, part of their culture uh, as far as like, or it's a subculture, I should say. Um, and it, it, it is about having organizing. And the one thing that I love about it is it's not just about being organized. It's about creating a feeling within yourself. Like if ah. you're feeling anxious about something, mm. then you shouldn't really be doing it. But if right. you... If I'm anxious about <laughs> going to work and finding traffic. So I shouldn't do it. <laughs> you should find a way to make it less anxious for yourself. Uh -huh. You should find a way to make it more enjoyable for yourself. And that's what kawaii journaling is about. It's about creating a, a feeling of, of joy when you look at these things that are harder to do. Mm -hmm. And um, that is the big inspiration of, of why I started really pushing uh, doing classes and teaching people how to do kawaii journaling, pushing how to, uh, uh, pushing planner meetups and uh, really getting into doing plan with me's and showing how I, I structure my planner and, and whatnot. Cause I get a lot of people coming to me. It's like, Oh, I don't know how you can keep something uh, in a, in a, a planner, in a book. I actually have two that I work on in, in mm -hmm. the regular. Uh, I, I couldn't keep up. I put it on my phone and putting it on your phone is great, but then it becomes like a, a task. It becomes like a chore mm -hmm. after a while. Uh, so I always recommend if you're going to use your your phone, also put some things like in into a paper book, mm -hmm. uh, whether you'll be doing it bullet journal style, whether you are going to be taking notes via the, the sketch note style, uh, or if you're just going to be doing a bunch of memory book, memory keeping, mm -hmm. uh, all of that is Kawhi journaling. It's, uh, it's a, a little bit of everything, and that... That planning, that that fun, that creation that uh, goes into it makes those to-do lists, those chore lists, those setting up appointments more enjoyable. Because when you look at it, those small things like the stickers, the uh, the stationery, the writing things will make you smile or at least give you a moment of happiness. Yeah. Even if it is small and brief. That's awesome. That is true. And what we're going to do. Oh, let me switch my camera. What we're going to do is set up a series where Josephine takes us through that path of organizing our life, our tasks, our to-do list in a way that is, uh, gives us those positive feelings mm -hmm. and, and helps us move forward with our uh, goals yes. and plans, right? Yes, I will absolutely be doing that and sharing that with you. I will also be teaching classes at Momocon and I have a, a monthly meetup that happens. My next one is going to be April 20th at Rotham Cafe uh, in Duluth. There you go. Look, there's a lot of opportunities here to get together with Josephine. She's an amazing, talented artist. I kind of clicked on one of her pictures when she was talking. I didn't mean to interrupt what she was saying, but look at that, some of her drawings. Very clean. I like that. Thank you. And this is before the colors goes in, right? Because you probably yeah, that was that, that was just some ink work that I did for Inktober last year. Right. That's awesome. And then um, this is already we already talked about that. Let me see that that. And then oh yeah, and then this. And so another thing that you're working on is a prose book, yes. a prose comic, right? Yes, I am working on a prose comic. Okay. And we're gonna uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, the comic follows 
two friends who find a uh, who find a alien who uh, <laughs> <laughs> essentially who has been locked away in a stone underground, and it's it's based in a final. And it's based in a fantasy world, not Final Fantasy, sorry. It's based in a, a, a fantasy world. Uh, I'm big into Dungeons and Dragons. That's actually uh, something I'm very, very passionate about and do uh, different kids group stuff for. And it's about their daily life mm -hmm. uh, and learning to live together uh, despite all of their differences. It, it's a, definitely about found family. Nice. And last thing we're going to show you, is uh, Josephine Animates. Find her on Instagram. Instagram or Facebook or YouTube. Or you, okay. <laughs> That's right. And uh, thank you, Josephine, for being here with us today. You're welcome. Uh, I want to make sure that everybody leaves a comment. We're going to respond to a couple of them. Uh, Carlos Phoenix says, love the Franklin Covey, Covey Franklin system. Covey. And he uses Evernote and maybe Trello to handle personal projects. I'm all about Evernote. I and, love Trello it. actually. It, it is, uh, I, it's like um, the, what is it, the system called a Kanban, mm -hmm. or well, essentially translates to billboard. It's a, it's a Japanese system that is very, very useful and very helpful. I use it both uh, in the physical and in uh, the digital realm. Okay, we're getting ready to wrap it up. Uh, Jules says, following, thanks for sharing your story, Josephine. I also had a roundabout way. Uh, oh, no, she did tell me about that. Sorry. Uh, she says, much appreciated. Uh, Josephine, love your outfit. Thank she you. She did say that. Uh, everybody's, a, a lot of people giving us uh, claps and thumbs up. And please uh, share this video everywhere on Facebook, wherever you can. And uh, last question for you, and then mm -hmm. we'll wrap it up. If you could talk to the Josephine of um, 10 years ago, because uh, I imagine you were still in high school or something. Yes, I was still ago. in high school. <laughs> or it was... Getting ready to yeah. step out into the, into the uh, 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 past high school world. Yeah, I was, um, I was still in high school, and I'm only 26 now. <laughs> okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah. So maybe right before you got out of high school, what would you tell that Josephine today? I would tell her, be more mindful of who you call friends. And go ahead and and step out and do what's right for you. Don't don't get caught up in a lot of like what everybody else is doing. Just spend more time, uh, it spend more time working with yourself, doing a bit more personal development, and really focus in on on doing more artwork. And yeah, you're not going to have the social life you want at the at that time, but the people that are around you are not worth it. Mm. See, all right, that's all we got to say today. Josephine Ruff Sloan, find her. Uh, Josephine animates. I am DTM Delta Tango Mike. Today is a uh, coffee break with DTM. Make sure you have your coffee for today, or if you're a tea drinker, you know, go go for that. I guess you guess you could. <laughs> uh, but it's all about the coffee. Let's take a sip and uh, see you next time. We'll be back again a couple more times today. Let us uh, leave us a comment. Let us know how we're doing. Give us some feedback. And see you next time. This is DTM. Peace out. Bye-bye.